This is a rare event in recent times. The sun is shining. I've got to be honest with you, keeping to schedule has been very challenging in the last couple of weeks. But it's nice to have a sunny day. And as always, there's plenty to do on the plot. So it's really important for me to carry on with the raspberry bed today because, well, time's moving on. And in many ways, this is the hardest bit. I know moving all that clay was a challenge, but working your way through this outstanding bed of soil and removing the weed is quite a laborious and quite hard work but it's got to be done so strip by strip stage by stage is the only way and there's a few other things that are pressing around the allotment i've got to do a bit of pruning at some point and well the broccoli is coming out now i've got to remove some leaks so that we can get that bed back fully. But we have still been eating those, so I am doing that sort of slowly but surely. And the wayward kale there, I'm just leaving it at the moment, seems to be shooting up, which is fine. I've got to continue with these beds. Still not worked out what to do about wood, but I think I'm gonna end up just removing these wood slats that have broken down and decomposed and just get a bed into the center and well these I've removed the nets and they too need a bit of maintenance because they're starting to break down but all that is secondary to getting that raspberry bed finished so oh and one other thing I want to do I've got to choose my moment to prune this apple tree and you get a good view of it from here these two really stretching branches they're at the point where if I'm going to maintain the shape of this tree I'm going to need to prune both of those which will give me a nice shaped apple tree and that's a very prolific tree so it's important to keep the shape right and make the most of it. One thing that did happen yesterday, which I didn't film, is I had another delivery of horse manure. And it was a pretty treacherous job. You can see here the mud left from me walking through, well, what at the time was a flurry of snow, albeit it didn't lay. It's starting to dry out now, but it's a pretty rotten job and that's resulted in a considerably larger mound of manure and the next job for me in here will be taking the covers off these existing compost heaps and just topping them up with what's here and moving forward that way right morning girls Well, more of the same here. You notice I'm not wearing a coat. Pretty brave, I thought. It's not that it isn't cold. It's just that I figured once I start working in these trenches, I will get warm pretty quick. And there will be a never ending dipping for weeds. So I don't think there's any risk of me getting cold this morning. And then I can move on to some other things to give me a natural break from time to time. Right, onward. Right, well, I'm gonna have a change of scenery for a minute. Get this pole out. See if I can take out these rotten boards. And while I'm at it, I'm now in a position to backfill 
I've still got a bit of grass growing in here. It's incredible. Uh, good time to get it out. There we go. And a little bit in here as well. Uh, it's really important that I get this out now because I've created this clay barrier the other side. The last thing I want is for weeds to start to proliferate from inside. And this one is a bit of a stinging nettle that's well underway. So what I'm gonna do is dig back as I go and fill the space and remove any weed as I go along that way. Hopefully I'll be rid of it in the main in this bed. I guess I'll always be taking bits and bobs of weed out as you do, but that'll be the lion's share of it removed. And it's looking pretty good in here now, pretty weed free, apart from a few of these tenacious yellow nettle weeds and their roots, of course, that will eventually sprout leaves. I'll get down in this corner as well. And then hopefully this bed will be pretty much organized and ready for some planting. And in terms of the barrier around it, as I said, still no solution. I'm loath to go and buy a load of wood to do these because wood at the moment is incredibly expensive. So I might just have to do with what I would call a natural barrier. In other words, pretty much nothing. But it's nice to see this soil in such good condition again after a year of fighting the weeds. Right, I'm gonna get on and just clear this up. So if you've not got wood, or you don't want to spend money on wood, this is one of your options, I guess, which is to just produce really a mound that's got sloping edges. And I can refine this a bit when I come to planting, but effectively you've got an air gap that helps you keep weeds at bay. And I'm trying to get a decent slope along here. And then I can remove this, which is just going to come apart in pieces. I've got a bit more down there, which edges onto the brick path that I created and a steel bar. It's amazing what I've hidden away. Put that weed over and that's pretty much it. And I think I'm not going to dig down any further and let the wood that's still there remain as a barrier. I just need to keep an eye on these edges as I go forward. So this is gonna be a very significant change to this tree. And subsequently, I'm not gonna do an awful lot more pruning on it. And so it's all about shape. And I think I'm going to take out this branch down to about here and this branch probably just below all these sprouting branches. And I'm going to use a pretty sharp multi-toothed saw because I want to get quite a clean cut. I'm going to take the time and just try and get an angled cut so that any water runs off. That's not going to be too difficult because I'm below it and this is going to take quite a time. So I'll bring you back. Okay, one down and you can see it makes a significant difference. And looking at it from standing back, I think I'm going to have to take this one about here so that we get an even shaped tree. I just make a preliminary mark on there and stand back. Yeah, that's going to be about fine. So two very substantial branches come off of this. 
but what that will mean is that the growth as it sap starts to rise will go into the remaining tree and not these branches that I want to remove. So for me, it's a good time to remove them. And then I've got two fairly substantial branches to find something to do with. Not sure. Right, my arm's feeling it, but I'm gonna get on and get this bit done. Well, that's taken those two branches out and it's a very significant change for that tree. But hopefully you can see that all round, it's now a better shape and stands a chance of forming a tree that is, well, sort of round in form. It's still coming out a bit this way and, you know, over the years I may take a bit off the left side, but it's about keeping that tree manageable and those tree, those branches would have forever grown out and across and eventually pulled down on the tree significantly. You can already see it's a tree that's always had a bit of a lean. That's fine. Hopefully now I won't do it too much harm and we'll get a crop of apples this year. Right, it's been a physical day. Well, I've been taking the broccoli out on a daily basis and giving it to the chicks who love it. I've got one left and that one's heading in there too. Or two left. So these stakes are coming out now and I'm just gonna recover this bit of ground so that I chop away any weeds that have started to grow. And that just makes sure that I don't have to put too much effort into it later on. Right, let's give these to the chicks. Here we go, girlies. And they've got a few more coming from the other bed. And I'm gonna use the one hoe. If you're gonna get yourself a tool this year and you don't have one of these, an oscillating hoe, then treat yourself because they make such light work of this sort of ground, just skimming through the surface, cutting the weeds. And they really are very efficient indeed. They do take a bit of effort when the ground is a bit solid like this, but they do cut through nicely. And this will just cause these surface weeds to die back, any bits of grass I'm pulling out just to give everything a helping hand. But, well, in Lord of the Rings, they have the one ring. On my allotment, they have the one hoe, and this is it. Right, I'll spare you the grunts and huffs and puffs. We are physical, energetic, but satisfying. And that bed, that's its first sort of preparation for the coming season. Now, just keep the weed down and as it dries out, it'll become a lot more friable. I think there's a real psychology to digging a space like this. You sort of kid yourself, you're getting further than you are. And there's nothing short of strip by strip. But you know, on the theme of, well, kidology, I think, I'm just gonna get myself to there. Because when I stand back and look down, that looks like halfway to me. And I think halfway is a good place. There's quite a lot of saw here but hopefully it will drag down and make a nice even bed. I keep finding so many bits of rubbish, an old window lock there, but it's gotta be doing the soil good and I'm getting rid of plenty of root and weed. Most of the root is from the raspberries that were here and well, that'll rot down. It's not essential to get it out but whilst I'm turning it over, it seems to make sense. Okay, last strip for today. Here goes.
Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. It was the physical edition and I'm well and truly cream crackered. So, oh, sorry about that. It was a little bit uh, of a malfunction on the tripod's part. But that's me done for today. As I say, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, click on the like button and subscribe if you want to get my updates every week. And of course, click on the bell and you'll get my notifications every Sunday and every Wednesday at 8pm. All being well. Have a good week.